Okay, I'm going to start part three here, and this is uh, basically going to be the subject matter of just Dr. Charles Morton. Okay, so Dr. Charles Morton was born in 1716, and he first attended uh, the University of Leiden from September 18, 1736, which he was uh, his date of admission. I got that record from the Index of English-Speaking Students who uh, have graduated at Leiden University. And we don't know much about who his parents were. I found one possible, um, or actually two uh, possible uh, baptismal records at the, at the International Genealogical Index for uh, Charles Morton being a son of a John Morton. And the Dictionary of National Biography 1812 edition that was published 13 years after Dr. Charles Morton died uh, says that Dr., uh, Dr. Charles Morton's father's name was John but doesn't say where it got the information from. And I haven't been able to substantiate that with any other information other than the uh, International Genealogical Index um, baptismal records. Uh, two of them, both of a John being the father, Charles being the son, and those entries being made in 1716. Now, whether that is actually his baptismal record, I have no way to know or connect that to him other than they were, um, the baptisms took place in counties that were close to Westmoreland County that he was said to have come from. But I think that uh, the Dictionary of National Biography has assumed that he came from Westmoreland County because the first uh, records that can connect him to his later life at least that I've been able to see, have I've been able to see, are of him being a doctor in Westmoreland County. So I don't know if they just merely assumed he was from Westmoreland County, or if they had some other piece of information that they're not mentioning to say that he actually was born in Westmoreland County. The record that I have, uh, just by the way, um, has him being baptized uh, 10 September 1716 in Liverpool in Lancashire County, which is nearby Westmoreland County. But um, whether that's actually him, I don't have proof. I don't have a will of a John Morton naming his son Charles the Doctor that lives in Kendall as, you know, that kind of thing that would substantiate it. Um, so I don't feel I have sufficient competent evidence to say that his son was John Morton just because the Dictionary of National Biography says it or because there was a Charles son of John. Those are two very um, common names. Morton's a common last name, so there must have been, or there, it's at least reasonably possible that there was another John father and Charles, although it is in the same exact year as he's listed as being born in the Dictionary of National Biography. I don't really have any other outside information to actually substantiate how they even knew he was born in 1716. Okay, so let's move on. Um, now, one mystery that I touched on in the videos I'm going to end up scrapping is why was Dr. Charles Morton a student at Leiden and what did that mean exactly? I had assumed when I wrote the Wikipedia article that just the fact that he was attending Leiden was a sign of some sort of prestige. But I also noticed uh, recently that a hundred years earlier the, pi the pilgrims actually were in Leiden and they were dissenters and they were actually um, well, people that were um, that had left England and moved to Holland just so they'd be able to practice their their brand of religion, and in in Bolster Whitlock's notes upon the King's writ and the introduction that Dr. Morton writes, he does touch uh, a little bit upon English constitutional law, and he seems to um, uh, place some importance upon religion. Uh, freedom of religious practice in a very vague sense, and I, I get a very vague idea that Dr. Charles Morton had a relationship in some way to the, in fact, uh, Mortons that were ended up being pilgrims and coming over to Massachusetts later on after the Mayflower, but shortly thereafter. There was a Charles Morton that was a preacher um, that shows up in a lot of genealogical accounts um, that was in Massachusetts at one point. So it's unclear, but those are just vague 
clues and a lot, a lot to do with um, who Charles Morton's parents were are related just to clues and ideas but still direct evidence to show exactly who his father was just is not out there um, there is some evidence that's presented in the book called The Scott of Liza Minnelli and Liza Maynard um, where there is a chapter on the Mortons that is has a lot of errors in it but in that chapter one factor that is asserted is that uh, the family was supposed to have descended from um, Albertus Morton um, now whether that's true or not I don't know I don't have any substantial any evidence to substantiate anything that would get uh, Dr. Charles Morton a, a connection to any father or anything like that other than just a possibly coincidental entry in the IGI and I don't even know if the Dictionary of National Biography looked up for <laughs> looked in the IGI perhaps or looked in church records and or I don't know where they got that 1716 birthday and I don't know where they got that um, his father was named John so if I knew that it would be much better okay so moving on okay and then the second mystery about Dr. Charles Morton's life is you know what was it about Dr. Charles Morton and his um, personality or his rank amongst his his peers that that really allowed him to um, marry some people that can be viewed as um, or get involved with some people or be put in positions that are historically significant in a country that seemed at the time used to place a lot of importance upon having rank or title and um, again I don't see how Charles Morton really was given any or had any rank or title ever in his life but during his life he married um, uh, his first wife, Mary Morton, who was a descendant of the Blood Royal, and he also married um, the daughter of the ex-treasurer of Ireland and the ex-wife of a baronet, and um, he was appointed as you know the head librarian of the museum. So either he was a very smart and qualified man or there's just something we don't know. Now, in a lot of cases, especially in earlier times, ranging from the 1500s and even a little bit in the 1700s, there was this concept in, um, uh, and I guess I'll get a little bit into the way the English law worked at the time, at least. I don't know if it works this way to this day. I don't, I don't think it would, but back in those days, back in the 1700s, uh, when you married a wife, uh, as soon as you married that wife, um, all all of your wife's personal property became the husband's. And so, so to work around this, what they what the families would do is they'd actually have marriage contracts, so to speak, before drawn up beforehand that the um, that the you know basically you'd have to kind of pay for your wife to kind of make up for the fact that you were going to inherit certain amounts of money due to the fact that you married the wife. They'd even have, um, you know, sometimes uh, when people married into a wealthy family, they'd have to change their last name to that of the wife's to make it all well and good for the person that's going to pass on the money uh, when they died in the form of inheritance. And that happened a number of times, and that happened even as late as the 1800s. So another mystery is, another question that I've had consistently before Dr. Charles Morton is um, why didn't Dr. Charles Morton have to pay a dowry or did he pay a dowry uh, before he married <laughs> Mary Berkeley descendant of one of the King Edwards it's unclear to me now not everybody agrees with me and it sounds to be you know Obviously, this day, you know, if <laughs> in my mind, it's perfectly fine for Princess Diana, you know, or whoever, or you know, get the, <laughs> some prince or whatever. I, I'm, I'm not discriminatory myself. I'm just going by what I've seen. I'm presenting that back as, as at least a good question. Okay. Now, sometime before 1745, 
Again, so he's attending Leiden in 1736, but he isn't arriving at Kendal and getting married until 1744. But he did. On September 13, 1744, he moved to Kendal, Westmoreland County. And that's probably around the time where he got that little piece of land that he willed, and he practiced as a medical doctor. Now, before he practiced as a medical doctor, he wrote his doctoral dissertation. Um, it's called De Tussi Convulsiva, and that is on the whooping cough. And that is available, well, I haven't been able to examine it, and it's written in Latin. On You can just search Google for De, Tuss De Tussi Convulsiva, and you'll and Carolus Morton, and you'll find that entry for him. Um, and you'll find an abstract for it, but you won't find the actual article. I haven't been able to examine that, but he wrote his dissertation, and he later showed up and married Miss Mary Berkeley, who was a, a, a niece of Lady Betty Germain. And that took place in September 13, 1744, at Kendall, Westmoreland County at the time. Now, Westmoreland County has since split into other parts, but that's what it was at the time. Now, at the time I wrote this, I said that they had one known child that was Elizabeth Morton that was born May 26, 1745 at Kendall. Now I'm told by another researcher uh, named Jill Gray who's doing a very, very good book on Savile Morton, one of um, Dr. Charles Morton's grandchildren, um, that she had found another record of a child that was either stillborn or died young that was a son that had passed away and I'm just going to pass it on. I don't have any evidence myself about that but I I trust the quality of Jill Gray's work enough that I'm going to say that that's probably true. <laughs> There's one exception. Most of this I have. Everything's backed up by some kind of um, supporting documentation. And that that marriage, and uh, in fact, I'll say what my supporting documentation is for that marriage. If I could find footnote number three. It's actually the International Genealogical Index, which is familysearch.org. Okay, but it's also mentioned, the fact that you married Mary Berkeley is also mentioned in um, Collins Gentry, I believe. I don't remember. Okay, so they had one. Elizabeth Morton, their only child, was born May 26, 1745, also at Kendall. I guess I'll stop right here. I don't want to lose this.